to gather all of this, you know, these exchanges, I asked Carrie Lake on Wednesday's show uh, that it's one thing to be emboldened, but do Republicans, including Nikki Haley, making this choice to be so bold and even bombastic, is this alienating any of these candidates? Is there any discussion behind the scenes as to whether this is the right way to communicate or is it starting to come off a bit antagonistic? I don't think it's coming off into antagonist. Uh, oh my goodness, antagonistic <laughs> at all. Um, it's early in the morning. Thank you for having me. Absolutely, um, I no, get it. I don't think so at all. Listen, I mean, I think that what we need here in America are leaders who are strong leaders who will stand up to bullies. And the only person on that stage that has stood up to bullies, whether it is in South Carolina or at the UN, is Nikki Haley. So last night you saw that she took on Vivek, who. I, I loved her line because every time he talks, I feel dumber too. And, you know, TikTok is a big, serious threat for us here. She took on Ron DeSantis on his fracking, on his ban of fracking in, in uh, Florida, which is so important for us to use every single bit of energy that we have for energy dominance and for independence. She took on Donald Trump. And I think that's what we want to see. We want to see leaders who are not afraid of who's behind them or who's in front of them. Can I ask you one question, though, when you say that you concur with her statements? Is it that Vivek is coming off as condescending or that he has dumb points and she feels dumber for listening to them? I think it's a little bit of both. I think, number one, he's completely uneducated on the issues and the topics. I don't know where he's getting his information from. And I think the other thing is the way he comes across, the way he communicates, is very condescending to every single person on that stage who has so much more experience than he has. Let's talk about a, a, a favorability, okay, for Nikki Haley. A new News Nation Decision Desk HQ poll that we've released finds 31% of voters have a favorable view of Haley, 40% unfavorable. Uh, I don't have the details as to why, uh, but the poll also finds former President Trump leading by double digits. I, I mean, in terms of, I mean, strength, you, you look at this, most of these candidates, including Nikki, have less than a 10% favorability rating when it comes to who people would vote for. What will it take after these all these days and months leading into 2024 for Nikki Haley or anyone on that stage to break through? So, I mean, I think, number one, it's really important to remember history. Because if you go back to 2007, no one really knew who Barack Obama was. They knew who Hillary Clinton was. If you go back to 2012 in the Republican primary, you had out there Scott Walker, you had Jeb Bush, and all of a sudden, you know, you see who's who's emerging, right? In 2016, it was the same thing. You had Donald Trump out there. No one knew Donald Trump was even going to win in that primary, right? Again, it was Jeb Bush. It was, you know, all those names, those household names. Ted Cruz was out there. And all of a sudden, Donald Trump wins. So I think history is a really important indicator. I think polls are polls. And the only poll that actually matters is what voters do on Election Day. And so the front runner is the front runner. But I think these debates are super important because what they show is they show that the candidate can get out there and who knows the issues. And Nikki Haley, from education to immigration to energy to health care, all the way through, she hits on all of those policy perspectives that Americans really want to see in a leader, in knowledge, and in someone who is going to be sustainable, and not someone who's a has-been who may not make it through another four years. Well, and obviously, she has a very wide-ranging resume, but do you think that voters know her enough? And more importantly, Jennifer, do you think that people know her plan enough for what she would do differently? than Donald Trump for what she would do differently than this current administration. Well, this is like dating, right? So it's it's time to get to know the candidates. It's time to get to know their policy perspectives. And listen, when the mainstream media is only covering Donald Trump for all of his indictments, it's like this helium balloon we can't get rid of. So instead, I think we need to refocus. We need to refocus on the candidates that are out there. Last night's debate, I think, showed us that Really, Nikki Haley was number one on that stage. Maybe Ron DeSantis, maybe it should be a, a showdown between the two of them. And I think Nikki Haley, time and time and time again, will show that she is the one that has the policy perspective, the dominance on it, the one who has specific solutions to all of the things that people are concerned about. Your own poll. Right. When we look at inflation, when we look at the economy, that's what people are concerned about. Those meat and potato kitchen table issues. That's what people are concerned about. And that's what Nikki Haley brings to the table. Well, she certainly was, again, a, a presence there on the stage 
Uh, we'll see as we go through this courtship heading into 2024 if she can release more of her personality and more of her topics, her platform agenda items. Uh, Jennifer Nasser, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Good points raised by her. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.